All right, welcome to the first video on unit conversions. There are going to be two videos in this series. This will be the longer of the two. Uh, you should also see on the website that you can download the homework assignment, which does cover all of the material covered in these two videos, and will be due the first day that you have class with me in August. There will also be a quiz on all of this material the first day of class as well that you need to prepare for. But if you're able to do that homework assignment, uh, you should be fine. What you should also have out at this time is a calculator and a uh, pen or pencil and a piece of paper. You're definitely going to want to take notes as you watch this video. I will give you times to pause and stop and do some work on your own. Um, as well, there will also be an important table that you want to copy down in order to work on the uh, worksheet. And so make sure you get that down sort of neatly. And I'll point it out to you when we get there. So we have two objectives for today. First, you want to be able to distinguish between variables and units. That's a very easy objective that we can knock off very quickly. And then you want to be able to convert single variable units using unit prefixes. Now, everybody has seen this material before, and you may have seen it as unit multipliers. And so if you find this material easy, that's great. It means that you're in a good position to start the year. You can breeze through the homework assignment. If you find it more difficult, that's no problem either. You haven't seen unit multipliers probably in a couple years. And so definitely pause, take your time, and we want to make sure that everybody's coming in on the same page the first day of the year. So the first thing that we want to talk about are um, units of measurement and what's the difference between a variable and a unit. So if you look here on the left, you should see that I have a picture of a lighthouse right there. And if we wanted to measure how tall this lighthouse was here, what would be the variable that we're measuring compared to the unit? Okay, The variable that we would be measuring would be what is the height or the length. So the variable is the length or height. And then the units, we could choose any myriad of units to measure the length. I'm sure you can think of a bunch. Just a couple that I can think of. We could measure the height in feet, meters, miles, etc. Now, of course, some of these units would be appropriate and some of them not. Inches or millimeters, probably not. Miles is too big. But feet or meters would definitely be appropriate. For us, we would probably measure this in meters, keeping in mind that feet is not a metric unit. And like Mr. Caputi says, inches are evil. Another thing that we could measure is how long does this lighthouse stay on? Okay, If we were trying to measure how long the lighthouse light stayed lit, what would be the variable? Well, the variable would be time. And there are a bunch of units that we could use for that as well. Examples of some of those units could be hours or minutes, days, maybe seconds. Now, for this, hours is probably going to be most appropriate, but for us, we're in this physics class typically going to be measuring time in the unit of seconds. Okay, So the distinction between a variable and a unit is a variable is the quantity being measured, and then the units are what is the scale. Okay, And so next to variables here, I'm going to write what's the quantity being measured, what's the thing that we're measuring, and then the units are the scale that we're measuring that in. And basically on the quiz I'll just ask you to sort of find, uh, define what is the variable and what's the unit in an experiment. Okay, next, I want to talk about three variables that we can measure directly in any experiment. And they are length, mass, and time. And the things that we would use to measure each of these are a ruler or a meter stick, mass we're going to use some sort of scale, and time we'll use some sort of stopwatch. So those are the variables that we can directly measure. Now the units that we're going to measure those in are a little bit different. We're going to use the metric system. And so length we're going to use meters. Mass 
mass, we're actually going to measure in kilograms. And if you notice here, this is a unit prefix, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And then time, we'll measure time in seconds. These are the units that typically get used in any physics class. When you go to college, these will be the basic units that you use in any class. Scientists working with physics definitely use meters, kilograms, and seconds. And if you look here, meters, kilograms, and seconds, this system gets called the MKS system as measurement. MKS units, meters, kilograms, and seconds. And that's typically the unit system that we will use in a physics class. Now, unit conversions, why convert? Why do we need to go from grams to kilograms, or from meters to millimeters, or centimeters, or kilometers? And so I just want to give you a simple example here. If you look to your right, this is a picture of the Climate Mars Orbiter. That picture right there. This was a $125 million NASA orbiter that was sent to Mars, but there's a problem. Once it made it there, this orbiter, which was only designed, designed to circle the planet, actually crashed into it. That was $125 million lost. And when they went back over to try to figure out what happened was, is they realized that one team of scientists that was working on this rover was using feet, inches, the British system of units, and then another team was using meters, seconds, kilograms. And so their calculations didn't match up, which caused the orbiter to malfunction and then crash into the surface of Mars. Unit conversion is important because we need all scientists to be talking about the same scale when we're looking at experiments. And so in this class, we're going to use the MKS system so we're all talking about exactly the same thing. It makes scientists angry, as you can see right here when, this is Mr. Seymour being angry, uh, makes scientists angry when units don't agree. And so we're going to use the MKS system in this class. So this table up here at the top is the table that you want to copy down neatly into your notes. Pause this video right now and go ahead and take a second and copy this down. Good. So, what I want to do is explain how this table works, and then we're going to look at two example problems together. So, if you look here, your base units are going to be grams, meters, liters, etc. Something that doesn't have a milli, centi, kilo, or mega written in front of it. And so, if you look here, the example that I want to give is, let's say you have one gram. This table says that one gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. The symbol for a gram is a lowercase letter g. And so milligrams is lowercase mg. Let's look at another example here. Let's say that we have one liter, and we wanted to see how that compared to centiliters. Well, as you look at this table, one liter equals 100 centiliters. Liter is a capital letter, or the lowercase letter L, and so CL. And this would go on again and again. So 1,000 meters is equal to, and this should be a one in front, one kilometer, or kilometer. Lowercase letter m, so kilometer. Make sense? And so this table fills out that way for any base unit that you're going to use. We're going to see it for mostly grams and meters in this case. We won't see a unit of volume a whole lot. What if we wanted to convert between the two? So if we're looking right here, how many centimeters are in 42 meters. We need to use a system of what are called unit multipliers, and I know that you all did this freshman year, but it's probably good to refresh. So we want to convert from meters, which is over here, 42 meters, to centimeters. So we're going to start with our 42 meters. So I'm going to write 42 m for meters, and then you can choose to put it over one or not. 
And what we need to do is we need to get this meters into centimeters. So I'm going to multiply by a ratio. And then I need to look at the table up top to see, okay, where do I see a relationship between meters and centimeters? Okay, well right now it's written as liters, but let's clear this out. And if you look right here, we see a base unit and centa. So for every one meter, there are 100 centimeters. So I'm going to put, in this case, meters in the bottom because I want the meters to cancel out. You've got a meter in the top and a meter in the bottom they are going to cancel out. Centimeters will go in the top. And then I'm going to fill in this ratio. So we know that for every one meter, according to what we saw right here, there are 100 centimeters. Again, since we have the same thing in the top and the bottom, they cancel out, and we're left over with just centimeters in the top. At this point, we can simply multiply it across the top and the bottom. 42 times 100 is 4,200. The units that are left in the top are centimeters. And in the bottom, 1 times 1 is equal to 1. So you could put this whole thing over 1. I'm not going to put it there. And if you notice, there are no units left in the bottom. And so the correct answer, as we can see right here, is going to be... Oops. And grab this and drag it over. 4,200 centimeters. Perfect. Go ahead, let's look at this next one. How many kilograms are there in 8,000 milligrams? Now, this is a little bit different, and you'll see that because I'm going to group these guys together. You'll see that because we're not going to a base unit. We're going from a kilogram to a milligram. And that's going to be right here. Kilogram, milligram. The problem with that is that there's no conversion to go directly from kilograms to milligrams. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to start with what we've been given. And that's 8,000 milligrams. So I'm going to start by writing 8,000 milligrams, mg, all over 1. Now, if I look up here, I can see already that I have a conversion between milligrams and grams written right there. So let's do that first. Again, I'm going to put milligrams in the bottom, and then grams in the top. Now, I know that for every 1,000 milligrams, I have one gram. So that takes care of this top conversion, but I'm not done yet, because if I look here, I can cancel the milligrams out, but I'm left with grams in the top. I don't want to have grams in the top, I want to have kilograms in the top. So I look up to my table again and I look, okay, there's kilo here, so I'm going to use this conversion. I'm going to put grams in the bottom this time because I want the grams to cancel out and kilograms in the top. Now, what does the conversion say? It says that for every 1,000 grams, there is one kilogram. So I'll put 1,000 here and one in the top. Now, the only units that I have left over are kilograms in the top, which is exactly what I want, kilograms. So at this point, I can multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. This is 8,000 times 1 times 1, which is 8,000 kilograms, or the units in the top. And in the bottom, I have 1,000 times 1,000, which is 1 million in the bottom. And there are no units there. And so what I have left is 8,000 over 1 million kilograms. And if I were to take this mm -hmm. and drag it, now I want it to be fancy and it's not working out, we get 0 0.008 grams, which is correct. 8,000 divided by a million is 0 0.008. 
Now, this isn't grams, this should be kilograms, that's my mistake. Kilograms. Alright, these are three examples which I'm going to provide the answers to in a moment. But what I'd like you to do right now is pause this video and try to solve for these three problems on your own. Go ahead and pause right now. Okay. Welcome back, and I'm going to give you the answers to these top two. The correct answer for this one is 0 0.8 meters. The correct answer for number two, how many milliliters are in 3.5 kiloliters? It's 3,500,000 milliliters. And then how many seconds are in 5 hours and 10 minutes? That one's a little bit trickier, although I feel pretty comfortable about our ability to convert time. What you would want to do in this case is you would want to take everything and get it into minutes. So 5 hours getting it into minutes, if we were to take 5 hours for every 1 hour, there is 60 minutes. These cancel out. So we're left with 300 minutes plus the 10 minutes that you see right here. So we have 310 minutes. Now we get, need to get this into seconds. So same thing, minutes in the bottom to cancel out, seconds in the top. Minutes cancel out. For every one minute, there are 60 seconds. Simply multiply across the top, and you should end up with the correct answer, which is 18,600 seconds. So if you have any questions, go back, rewatch things in this video. Uh, give the first two parts of the homework assignment a try, and then once you finish those, you can go ahead and move on to the second video and finish up the homework assignment.